Today, Crazy Will here today, today we're gonna be talking about the upgrades that I've done to my Elegu Mars. I'm gonna share them with you guys, show you how to make the printing process just a little bit easier. Stay tuned and I'll show you what I did. Hey, Crazy Will here from Crazy Will's Tech Show. Today, we're gonna be talking about the upgrades I have done on the Elegu Mars. So we're on the new side of my little workshop. I actually built a little table here. I'm gonna show you some pictures. And I built a box with an exhaust fan. And we're gonna go through some of the upgrades that I've done for my Elegu Mars to make the printing process easier. And this might be a little extreme building this, but I do YouTube and I was taking up my workspace that I normally film products, unboxings and stuff like that. And it was getting in the way of product reviews that companies were waiting for. So I had to either just Decide to do a review or a print, which the review is gonna go first. The first thing that I did was I made a case with an exhaust fan. I bought an exhaust fan for an actual bathroom, which they're around, I think, $15 to $20 around that price. If you want one with a light, which I shouldn't have been cheap, I should have got one with a light, and I didn't, but I did put a light in there. I just wired it up how you normally just do a plug, which is really easy. It's like three wires, same colors, hook it up, and then plugged it into a smart switch, which is actually controlled by our Echo. So I could say, Alexa, turn on the exhaust fan. Okay which works really great. Alexa, turn off the exhaust fan. Okay. The reason why I put it on a smart switch is you usually have gloves and a mask and all this other crazy stuff and it's just easy to tell her to turn on the exhaust fan. The only downside of this is when you have a mask on and the exhaust fan is on, it's hard for her to hear you. I actually use the Ghost On plugs, which you can see that review right here. And I use those, they're very inexpensive. You wanna try and put as much as you can on voice because you're not gonna be able to touch things. So another big upgrade is I actually hooked a Raspberry Pi Zero to my Elegu Mars and basically print from a Raspberry Pi and you don't need to worry about putting that USB stick in and out. And this one, the USB stick's in the back so it's a pain in the butt to constantly go around. I mean, it's bad enough I gotta turn it on that way but I gotta go around and put the USB stick in there as well. So I wanted a wireless way because my laptop is a 100 feet away from this office in my living room where I'm usually playing around watching TV and putting together my next prints. So instead of going back and forth with my USB stick, I just transfer the files onto my Raspberry Pi Zero. I'm not gonna make a video on it because Frame One Makerspace, he was the one that came up with how to network this or he found somebody that did it and he did a video on it. And I'll put his link down in the description below. I actually watched his video and went through the steps and made this work with your network, which is really nice. So click on his video down below if you want to network your Raspberry Pi. And this is a big tip, guys, if you want to do this, the only thing is, he says with the printer's USB port, you'll be able to power the Raspberry Pi Zero. Unfortunately, in my case, I don't know if it's an older Pi, it didn't work, so I actually connected a power connection to the Pi and then to the printer. The only thing is, for some reason, it also powers the printer when I turn it off, so I have to unplug it all the time. In the beginning when I was trying to network it, it wasn't responding and it was because it wasn't getting enough power. So make sure you connect the power source to the Pi and then connect the Pi to the actual printer and that makes this a whole hell of a lot easier. I actually have that on a Ghost On smart switch as well. I tell it to turn on 3D Pi and that way I can turn it on from when I'm in the living room and then transfer my files over to it. So it just saves me a couple steps and it's nice to work on several projects and just constantly transfer it over and not worry about having the USB stick or losing the USB stick. I could just do it through my network which is really nice. And a really quick helpful tint anybody on a Mac anybody else not on a Mac you could skip this part if you're going to network to this Unfortunately, there is a couple extra steps You have to go to go and then connect to server and then actually put your IP address of the Pi When this screen pops up and asks for your username and password Just click on guest and hit connect and then you have access to the Pi and you can click and drag I got a little confused because I'm on a Mac and most people are on Windows machines and transferring the files Wasn't just plug and play for me, you have to go through an extra step with the Mac. Frame One Marketplace also showed me how to add the camera. And now with the Raspberry Pi camera, I actually printed these cases, by the way, guys. I did not mention that. I printed the Pi case on my Elegoo, and I also printed the camera case. And I'll see if I can find those links and leave them down below. It worked really well. The camera was only like nine bucks, and it came with the long piece. I'll try and leave a link down below, but my links constantly change, and I don't want to confuse you guys, but at least it'll 
give you a description and you could try to research it again. But yes, he has a tutorial on how to do that. I actually made a web portal and I'll show you a little picture of what that looks like and I could start streaming and stop streaming. The resolution of that camera is not the greatest and trying to get the right angle so you could actually see the screen. Really what I use it for is to make sure that nothing's really messing up and I also use it to see where I am on the actual percentage bar so that way I could see how much longer it's gonna take for my print to be done. And again, this just saves me from going back and forth to my house, you know lazy. I added that right here and I added the Raspberry Pi right here so you guys could just see that down below. I'm going to leave two of his videos there that show you how to actually add the camera and actually add the Raspberry Pi. To me those were very big and important upgrades. I can't express this enough if your prints are coming out weird or wonky or they're just not sticking to the build plate chances are and I've done this I'm up to 75, 79, some in the 70s of prints, I've stripped out my build plate screws right here. What I did was I replaced them with new bigger screws with actual heads so that way I could take them out. And this is really nice because if it does strip out, I can actually take a pair of pliers now and rip this off. And you can see the difference between the Allen keys very big difference you know you get a little bit more grip with this one and less chance of stripping I bought these at Lowe's did not have to change any of the screw holes didn't have to change anything at all and I couldn't find this online I was getting really frustrated I actually just took this piece and brought it to Lowe's with me and was like I need to find screws that'll fit this so basically what the screws are because you can't find this anywhere I was having a hard time I did find it but it was very mixed match information the particular ones on here are M6-1 by 20 so that shows you what size those are. I think I picked these up for less than a dollar at Lowe's. I think they were $1.19, something like that. I bought two of them, comes two in a pack. They're M6s, so you are gonna have to change out your Allen key. I think this is a, it should be a six millimeter, but it's, what is it, five millimeter? Yeah, it says five, five, five millimeter, yeah. I don't know why if they're M6s, but maybe that's the, the diameter of this, I don't know. Anyway, I've done several prints with this. Works out really great, makes it a lot tighter. I don't have to worry about this build plate really moving. I mean, I can wrench on this thing and it's not moving so that's really good upgrade you don't really have to do anything to it you just have to change out the screws like I said I'll leave those in the description down below too I couldn't find them anywhere so I think this is a really important upgrade because your screws are gonna strip and then your prints are gonna be messing up and you're not gonna know why I actually made this right here, it's a little drip tray. I found it on Thingiverse from this guy that built his box, and I'll leave his description down and below. I forget his name at the time, but he has this little cool built-in drip tray. Basically what you do is you put where the drip tray would go. You You'd put the bottle here and then you put this here with a filter and it drips right into it, which is really nice. It makes cleanup a hell of a lot easier. I don't have to worry about that tray. It just drips into its space. You'd have the bottle right here and then you'd have this right here with a filter and it just let it drip and then I'll be working on a print while that's going on, cleaning it up, getting everything and then it come back to my bed. Another thing that makes printing really convenient and I mentioned this in my other video was this little light box right here. All it is is a nail curing UV light that actually has feet that pull out. I'll leave a link in the description down below. I don't know if they still sell them. The key with this is it will turn off after 30 seconds. The way to keep it going is you hold down on this for I think it's over 10 seconds and you'll see an 8-8 and it'll stay on as you can see. I did hook this up to a smart switch as well so that way I could just say Alexa turn off UV light. Okay. So I set that up with another ghost on switch. I did put a mirror at the bottom. You don't have to do that. You could just use tin foil. To create this, all it is, as you can see, it's a plain box that we use for shipping envelopes. I cut a hole in it. I cut a hole at the top up here, put tin foil all around the outside of it, and then just added the nail thing. So roughly it cost me under $15, and I have a UV curing station. And what's worked for me is cleaning them up. I'm actually using Simply Green. Constantly Concentrated. You can get that at Sam's Club really cheap. I think it's $15 for a gallon and I dunk my prints in that and then I throw them in water, clean them up and then I put them for 20 minutes on one side, flip them over 20 minutes on another side and they're usually fully cured. So that's been working out really well for me. If any of you guys have been following me on Instagram, you know I've been obsessed with my 3D printer. You can take a look at my Instagram right up in the corner. I think it's over here, over there, whichever and you can click on it and take a look at 
at some of the prints that I have done on my Elegoo and I've actually painted. So if you're really interested in the Elegoo and you want to see what it can do, take a look at my Instagram. I've been posting nonstop. I'm like obsessed. So there's some upgrades and maybe a little bit of tips and tricks there. All the descriptions will be down in the bottom. If you got a new Elegoo Mars, tell me how much you like it. And if I was the one that recommended it to you, please leave a comment down below and let me know what you think. Really appreciate it. Make sure you like and subscribe if this video helped you in any way. And remember, you can do anything if you put your mind to it. Later, guys! I don't think my wife knew what she was getting into when she bought me the Elegoo Mars for Christmas. I think she regrets it now because I spend way too much time out here. I know what you're thinking. Crazy Will's tech show's over. What do I do now? Real simple, guys. You hit that like button and you hit that subscribe button and then you check out my other videos. It's not over. I made a lot. It's been a good year.